Hi, I'm Adam Rex. I'm the illustrator of Gladys the Magic Chicken, written by Adam Rubin. You've asked me some questions. I'm going to answer them to the best of my ability. Uh, one, how long did it take to create the art for this book? I don't remember exactly, but it took months. I go through the manuscript and I, I mark it up. I decide, oh, maybe this section might be a page and this section might be a page. And then I sketch the whole thing up in black and white. And that is a process uh, of, of usually several weeks all by itself. Later, when we've all decided, you know, editor and art director and author and illustrator that, that the book is in as good a shape as we can make it, then I actually start making the final artwork, which, which takes months. You know, it probably takes me, you know, on average about four months. Uh, a page with not a whole lot going on might just take me a day, but another page, for example, a, a page like in Gladys where a bunch of pirates are fighting on a pirate ship or there's a huge parade with elephants and dancers and horn players, you know, a page like that might take me, you know, quite a few days, maybe even a week or two to get finished. Okay, your next question is, how did you decide which parts of the book to illustrate? On a book like Gladys the Magic Chicken, I felt like I could, you know, I could barely keep up with that book. I had so many twists and turns. It moved to so many different locations, and I felt like all I could do was really just illustrate the obvious thing uh, that there was to illustrate at any given time. You know, the, the swordsman comes out of the dungeon to find a parade. Of course, I'm going to illustrate the parade. Uh, more so than with a lot of picture books, there wasn't a whole lot of choice. I just wanted to, to sort of match the epic, sweeping grandeur of Adam Rubin's story. What did I use to create the art for the book? Uh, so this book was painted entirely digitally. I uh, painted it in Photoshop. Um, I started out with some sketching you know, some traditional sketching with pencil and paper in my sketchbook. And when I am working on a book, you know, if I'm, I'm trying to figure out what some of the principal characters look like, I might end up drawing 20, 50 versions of that character before I feel like I got it right. Uh, and then, you know, when I'm trying to figure out what each scene is going to look like, that might involve a bunch of really small thumbnail drawings that I'm, I'm tweaking and redoing and redoing and redoing and moving the elements around and making this thing bigger or that thing smaller just trying to really maximize the the composition and you know therefore trying to maximize the the the, the feeling in the scene the the dynamism uh, the excitement of it I was very much looking at the art of Maurice Noble the great background artist of a lot of old Looney Tunes uh, cartoons and shorts. Uh, you know, very colorful, often slightly askew, forced perspectives, you know, a lot of real inventiveness uh, in the artwork that he made. So that dovetails into the next question, what was my favorite part of the book to illustrate? I was looking at all those Maurice Noble backgrounds and just thinking, you know, how can I push my own work to be kind of more exaggerated and really like vibrantly colorful and and sort of skewed and and interesting in the way that I, th I think his work is interesting. And I fell far short of the ideal of Maurice Noble. You look up more of his work. It's just really amazing if you aren't familiar with it already. But I feel like that made my favorite part of the the book just trying to really push each illustration into a, a kind of, of heightened, exaggerated territory. I think years and years of making fairly realistic looking paintings and illustrations in the early part of my career kind of trained me in a way that I don't really like all that much anymore. It, it's, it's made it difficult to to make those leaps and to really push myself into that kind of territory. So that was one of the joys of working on this book. So now I wonder if all that talk of, of trying to push myself away from realism and get myself out of that cage is going to make my next answer seem kind of strange. But the question is, what advice would you give to young authors and illustrators as they learn to improve their skills? Uh, to the illustrators, I would say, you know, draw from life as often as possible. And you can break all the rules that you want, but you gotta know what the rules are first. You're, you're drawing real life so that you can later go and 
draw whatever you want because learning how to draw a chair is, is, is the same thing as learning how to draw a dragon or a spaceship. Um, the, the skills are completely transferable. So I think that's it. Thank you so much for having any interest at all in what I have to say about these questions or anything else. So goodbye from Tucson. This has been Adam Rex. Thanks a lot.